Ask for nicer weather I was for that say festival. Breezy and nice, yeah. not a cloud in the sky. All right, let's go ahead. And of course, uh, we've been looking at um, a warm up. We've been talking about the last few days, and it looks like we're just starting to sort of work our way into that as we get ready to leave. As you said, Tracy, we're, we're leaving uh, August. We're heading towards September. Boy, can you believe that? And there it is, your highs inland. Not too bad, but looks like tomorrow we might have to add a couple of triple digits to this th to these lists. And there's a heat advisory. Now the advisory means you get into the high 90s to uh, maybe lower 100s. The heat warning level, which as you can see right there right now, interior portions of Santa Barbara alone, uh, at least for now in our area, that could mean possibly 105 plus. So again, we'll have to watch this the next couple of days. And boy, down in the deep south, uh, just continues to bake and broil with a lot of humidity and heat. And of course, um, we also have to look at the tropics. And we've talked about how the east coast was taking sort of a backseat to Hillary and all the attention on our west. West Coast, the Eastern Pacific, and it looks like now you get front row. Franklin starts to disappear. We do have a chance of something starting right here. I want to point that out in the Eastern Pacific, and a lot of the models are showing it heading off toward the West, which means that Hawaii will have to keep a very close eye on that. Now back over to the Atlantic Basin. This system right here, kind of a tempest in a teapot. It's really hot. The water is just ready for this, and watch it blow up. Right now, it's considered a depression, so um, it gets uh, the status of number. 10 as its rate, but we were expecting it to go to a tropical storm and then maybe a hurricane right into the uh, panhandle, sort of uh, the, um, the the turn right there to the west or basically west Florida, and it would be a Dahlia, I, the eye storm. So we'll have to watch this very closely. The good news is some of that energy might help to cool off the deep south, even though we might be looking at a lot of rain and some heavy wind. So we'll be watching that closely. Some gusty northwest winds near the coast right now. We're not getting a wind advisor. Tonight, uh, tonight and tomorrow night we could see a repeat, so we might get a wind advisory. We'll have to keep an eye on that, as you can see tomorrow night. So some sundowner enhanced activity right there could definitely put us over the threshold of about maybe 30 to 35 miles an hour. And when that happens, we end up having to put down the the, uh, the chance for a wind advisory. All right, some patchy fog tomorrow morning, and whenever we do get a heat wave that gra gradually uh, digs itself in from uh, say east to west, we always have to watch out for the chance of some fog kind of lingering right near the beaches. It gets pushed real low to the ground, could have some dense patchy clouds. So we'll have to watch again overnight tonight. It looks like we do see some reduced visibilities here and there along some of our coastal plains. And then as we go to very early uh, Sunday and then as we go to very early Monday, we see a similar pattern where you see those reduced visibilities. Not too bad when we get into the fractional amounts or the, um, the decimal range. That's when we know we're going less than a mile. And that's, of course, when we start to have the possibility of maybe a dense fog advisory. All right, heating up inland. We'll go ahead and start uh, tonight as we run the map and then we run toward tomorrow afternoon. I've said this before, this map is great for seeing trends. It's not so great for precise numbers. Look how high it gets along the coastline. Uh, the machine can only do its best. It's dealing with a very hot inland. The beach is not so much, so we sort of get the aggregate or the mean temperature here, and it makes it look like it's expected to be a lot warmer near the beaches. We expect the beaches to be a lot cooler, and of course, the inland areas getting really hot. So San Inez, you look at those areas like Paso Robles, uh, high over the next couple of days, high 90s to triple digits. Your beaches more than likely get more of a sea breeze, but once you get away from that influence, as you look at your highs tomorrow, still very warm, but once you get away from any coastal influence, it starts to get extremely warm and even dangerously hot. So that's why we have the heat advisory and the heat warnings for those areas. Uh, again, once you get off the coastal plains and into the valleys or foothills, it can get really, really warm out there. So take heed with that. 98 expected tomorrow and high, possibly a triple digit or so. So definitely heating up inland. And then boy, look at the beaches. Uh, I have a feeling, Tracy, that means we're going to be dealing with a little extra traffic because it will get busy as everyone tries to beat that inland heat. Unfortunately, surf is not cooperating with that northwest wind, though we do expect some wind swell kicking into gear over the next couple of days. And a small south will also build. And there's your forecast for Santa Barbara. And then right through the week, it stays nice. But then by about Thursday, high pressure weekends. We see the opening of uh, the sea breeze back into the game. So a lot of the triple digits will fade back into the 90s and 80s. Your beaches will kind of cruise along, get a little cooler, more fog. So the next couple of days, uh, the beaches will definitely be the place to beat the heat. Your inland areas will be quite, quite toasty. We'll be right back.